Yes, you're starting it with us. Yes. All right. So like Topo it. Chico. This is a Texas classic. Okay. You can't find this everywhere. No. This is a classic sparkling water drink. And typically we drink these with lime, but I don't have any lime. But ain't no party like an EXO party. We're going to cheers to the EXO pod show. Okay. You got to break well, up in your... We, what are you drinking gotta, over Guys, there? come on. We, we got to break this open. So I went over to Central Market for lunch. Uh, great sushi. Um, and picked this up. It is a... It is... Ah, sir, ah, see. Pure water harvested from trees. So I don't know what I'm about to taste, but it's supposed to taste like peach. So, well, mango. Okay. This is a little bougie, bougie. but you that's know, that's bougie. me. Did it the, cost $7? <laughs> you know, eight, eight, eight and a half. Eight and a half. <laughs> uh, I have the classic uh, Arnie, Arnold Palmer. Okay. Arnie. Uh, you can't go wrong with it. I mean, iced tea, lemonade. Yep, love it. It's good. I'm All right. All right, welcome to the pod show. The pod All right, cheers. Show. Salute. 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 This is gonna. The bubbly water will make me probably yeah. have. A hey, bit of good news. It doesn't taste like a tree, so that's good. Funny voice here. <laughs> no, it's great to have you on. <laughs> So introductions all around. Okay, we've got Eric Gomez, aka Ego. Come on. Oh. COO of Exo Marriage, and we also have Daniel Van, aka D Day. That's a new name. Oh, new name. name Apparently, guys, D Day it is. I expect to be called that. Marketing director extraordinaire of Exo Marriage. A couple of important team members, guys that I admire, respect tremendously. You've come on board Exo. You've been with Exo for Uh, just over a year now. It was a year in February. Here in February. That's wild, huh? It is. Yeah. You're less than a year on this side. Less than a year, but it feels like he's been here forever. Yes. It does. does. Uh, June. Since June of 2021. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So we've uh, we've had a full year already with uh, conferences, everything. But one of the things I wanted to do, do today on the show is sort of peel back the curtain, let people see kind of some of the most important people behind the scenes that make things happen on a yeah. daily basis with XO. Uh, a lot of the people who get a lot of love and attention, people like Jimmy Evans, David and Ashley Willis, and it's deserved. They're awesome. 100% but equally agree. awesome behind the scenes <laughs> are, are you two guys. So just having fun today talking about EXO, but also getting to know you better. Yeah, man. Talking about life. Wanted to dive in a little bit with some crypto talk. Uh, Come on. We're starting out with the crypto today, huh? Yes, you went we'll, get the some, we'll get there at some point. <laughs> All right. All right. And let's go. I know we, just, we already started this conversation a little while uh, earlier this morning and just talking about some of that stuff. So perfect. Well, first and foremost, are you uh, invested in crypto? So I am invested in crypto. I would say I'm like, um, I don't believe truly in crypto, but I'm not uh, 100% a skeptic in crypto. So I'm right in the middle. Um, I, I invested in it because it's a okay way of making some quick money. Um, but one of those where if it does drop, I'm one of those that's probably going to pull out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, maybe find another dip to, to roll back into and make some quick bucks. Uh, I don't know if I'm in it for the long haul. Uh, it's like one of those where... I'm still trying to figure out half the pieces behind it, what makes sense, what doesn't. Part of it doesn't even still make sense to me to this day. Mm-hmm. I just do it because, oh, someone said I could make 100 bucks. If I drop in 100 bucks, all right, I'll try it out and see how it goes. And that's just kind of how the way, the way I roll when I'm trading stuff. So, But you guys are kind of in the same space that I am, background-wise especially, because I got started in 1999. The internet bubble was there. I understood a lot about the technology mm-hmm. yep. behind the web, the internet architecture, architecture, a lot of what made the internet great back in those days. I understood it and was able to kind of use it to facilitate marketing efforts or whatever it was. Yeah. And I still have enough knowledge to where some of it makes sense, but knowledge has exploded so much that now I look at what they're doing with crypto and all the blockchain technology and how they're in- infusing that into a lot of what we do on a daily basis. And it's crazy complicated. Yeah. Um, there's there's so many parts and pieces to it. The the kicker, and everyone has a, has a crypto story, is I started investing in it several years ago, just on a fly, you know, just uh, just on a whim, just mm-hmm. trying to figure out, you know, what it was. And it was really difficult to invest in back then. But yeah. a buddy of mine was just, hey, get a Coinbase account, just just buy a little bit of mm-hmm. Ethereum and buy a little bit of Bitcoin. Uh, you can buy. Uh, percentage of it through mm-hmm. Coinbase, so I started doing that, and I built it up. But then I sold it right before it all took off. Yeah. So, so the key to that, some of that was being an early adopter. Hundred percent. Now, though, there's still a lot of opportunity. I just don't know if it's going to be 
uh, the, the the roller coaster ride that yeah. everybody wants it to be going straight up mm-hmm. with uh, the the Doge coins, the mm-hmm. yeah. all that because you're seeing now that they're all coming back down. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. I mean. I remember back in high school, my buddy was like, "Dude, this is this Bitcoin thing. Let's let's hop on it. It's like twenty bucks or something a Bitcoin at the time." And I was like, "You're an idiot. I'm never doing that. That thing's probably gonna go away." And lo and behold, he's the one that bought a bunch of Bitcoin back in high school, and now he's enjoying life a little bit, uh, a little bit on the brighter side, uh, with a couple zeros in his in his side, which is great. His early adoption is really the way that it's been. I mean, you think about IPOs or things like that too. Mm-hmm. Early adoption. If you you hit, you know, you hit Apple when they were small, and look at them now, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I think it's the volatility behind crypto that is probably the scariest part for any person to dive into it because mm-hmm. you really have to sit on it. Talk Hello. about your background, uh, Richard's group, because yeah. we'll get to your background too. No, I just wanted to add that yeah. he, he said high school and Bitcoin together. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And I have high school and like AOL disc. Yeah. yeah sorry, guys. You yeah. know, di- have, different uh, generations here. Much different. <laughs> uh, my high okay. School I, I just wanted to just say yeah, that. Yeah. So if you guys <laughs> bought into Bitcoin back in your high school days. Mine was no. tops, uh, Donruss <laughs> yes, trading yes. cards. Not there you go. Parts. Yeah, uh-huh. clear, yes. ultra. Still got those frames somewhere. Uh, I have a ton. I have a box full of old baseball cards. I have no idea what to do with them. And some of them have sentimental value to me, so I don't want to get rid of them. Old Nolan Ryan cards. I have some rookie <laughs> oh, yeah. cards. Did you have the King Griffey rookie card? Oh, of course. Mm. Yeah. You still have it? I still do. Nice. And I have the David Robinson basketball. Yeah. His rookie oh, card. Oh, wow. Okay. Huh? Mm-hmm. I did not mean to take us down this rabbit hole, but it's awesome. <laughs> no, I have a whole tub full of them. And I feel like we should check that out sometime. Bring it on the show. Let's go through some of your best cards. Yeah. Okay. Let's right. do it. Done. And, and I'll auction them off and probably make like $2.30 from them. So <laughs> they're, they're, you, you might find a gold card in there somewhere. Do, do people even pay anything for them anymore? They do. Yeah, yeah they actually dude. do. Yeah, there's still uh, quite a big market for it. Yeah, so. that and, dude, Pokemon cards. It's ridiculous how much some of those go for. Mm-hmm. Like, a buddy of mine had one card he's had since he's a kid. Like, 150 grand. That's crazy. Uh, he's like got it, um, got a case, got it authenticized and all of that. Um, but yeah, he's just sitting on 150 grand. He can unload whenever he wants. One of my favorite things, they're not worth anything, are I have a bunch of old Beckett's um, mm-hmm. that she used to look things up. And I have one with Bo Jackson. With That's the, a classic one. Oh, the yes. baseball and the shoulder pads on. It's just one. it's just awesome all around. Mm-hmm. That was uh, Those were the heydays of trading cards and oh, you know yeah. people going to conventions and getting autographs by people. I mean, it was, fan- it was mm. so much fun back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Moved away from that in NFTs now, but uh, my background. So I... Uh, uh, went to college at the University of Texas at Austin. So, Uh-oh. hook them horns. I'm gonna throw that out there. Sorry, Eric Randall in the back there. <laughs> He's throwing up. Um, but uh, studied. I, I went through uh, a few different majors there, and eventually ended up in the advertising space. Um, uh, I always spent two years trying to get into the business school, and sadly didn't make it because. Um, Freshman calculus really uh, <laughs> did me a good one. Uh, and then went into kinesiology and then flipped over to advertising. Really just kind of uh, fell along with it. It was, it was something that was uh, unique and different at the time. Um, it, was, you know, it was at the time when like Mad Men was also coming out and you're seeing these <laughs> shows. You're like, oh, I want to be that guy. Um, so it was cool. And then I, I came right out of college into uh, the Richards Group based here in Dallas. So a uh, really awesome agency, really awesome opportunity for me to learn. Learned a lot there. Spent uh, close to 10 years there. Uh, did wow. um, brand management to start. First five years servicing clients, creating commercials, uh, radio ads, TV commercials, um, digital, all that. And so it was a, it's a, a full service agency out there and they do stellar work. Um, the creative teams there are all spoiled with a uh, creative team there, man. They're, they just think on a whole different spectrum. Um, but uh, after five years there, uh, in that role specifically, there's a little bit of a void that uh, that came about with some shifts uh, organizationally there. And um, at the time, my boss, uh, Jeff, Jeff Armstrong, he uh, and a buddy, Taylor Smiley, started up the sports and entertainment arm, uh, what became known as Richard's Partnership Marketing, which was an affiliate of the agency. And so uh, I hopped on with them. I'm a big sports nut. Uh, I uh, enjoy every aspect of sports and, and keeping up with that. So it was a really good passion point mm. fit for me. And so we jumped into there and we started facilitating partnerships with our brands at the uh, at the agency with various sports entities out there. Um, you know, there's um, a bunch of different ways. I think partnerships makes a ton of sense in the marketing space. Uh, you just got to find the, the ones that make the most sense. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, one of the ones I, I love the most is um, 
Oh, Home Depot, Home Depot, and their uh, college game day, right? Oh yeah, sure. Like it's such a, a great, unique way. You never really thought about it. You think of even the smallest detail where this set was built, you know, by Home Depot, uh, and you can see kind of the the various components like that, and integrating that into a show like that was really cool. And so, uh, did about five years. Um, kind of funneling through a few different accounts, building partnerships, uh, both uh, professional and collegiate level um, um, teams and, and sports organizations. And then, uh, what was it, this, uh, November, December of uh, 20s when I um, heard about XO. My brother-in-law, yeah. you know, he's a good friend of yours, Ryan Warren. Ryan Warren. Yeah, so shout out there. Um, but then uh, the he... He a lot of shout outs. <laughs> oh, yes. I yeah, know. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's a he's a dancer extraordinaire. So oh yes, um, yeah. Funny story. That's how uh, I used to be a dancer, but uh, you're gonna have to edit dancer. that part out. Uh, <laughs> yes, male dancer. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so that was uh, you know, and that's where me and me and Ryan met. I'm married to his sister. Uh, she was a dancer as well back in college, and so we uh, we're just a big old dancing family. You that's know, awesome. Um, but uh, but yeah, and so that's when. Uh, I heard about XO and started interviewing. I interviewed for a different position, if you yeah, remember. I do remember that. Uh, something in the events department, and then kind of that didn't work out, and got a call from uh, you guys, and I was like, oh, why don't you come in and chat with uh, BE, the CEO? And I was like, really? Wow, that was a big step. I didn't get a job, and now I got to go in and talk to the CEO. So that was a, a fun next step, but that's uh, that was a year ago now, and now we're here. Oh, it's been great. I mean, I... For my background being marketing, uh, hiring somebody in the marketing department was important to say the least, but also I needed somebody that could help drive things at a higher mm -hmm. level. Uh, the Richards Group is world renowned. I mean, like yeah. they, they've been known for many, many years. They have high, high class clients, and they've they've done a lot in the, in the world. Unfortunately, they didn't. Uh, the the end of the story for for you Stan, know Stan yeah. Richards isn't great. Yeah, but they did a lot of great work, and Absolutely. so it's a really important feature uh, that you were uh, you spent time there and learned mm -hmm. a lot there. So th how that would apply to what we're doing here, I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know you that well. Uh, knew you uh, were brother-in-law to Ron Warren. That's great, <laughs> but uh, it's that's one thing to do that, but nothing to be able to execute sure. marketing at a high level. And since you've come on board, you have transformed that whole area. So yeah, it's been fun, it's, man. It's been great. See, we went through a major rebrand. Mm -hmm. We've overhauled our website. We've done a lot through our uh, conferences mm -hmm. with the, the themes and the branding. And so you've done a good job of, of, of taking that and making it work in the marketing space. Uh, and you and Karis have been married for how long? Uh, we are coming up on uh, six years now. Wow. Yeah, awesome. pretty wild, right? Um, so we got married back in 2016, uh, July 3rd. So coming on up, we got one son uh, and another one on the way. Uh, current son's two and a half, coming up on three in June. And I'm exhausted trying to keep up with this little guy, <laughs> man. That dude is he, I, I, it's awesome because he loves to run. I think he's going to be pretty good at sports. We'll see. But the dude's just nonstop. I feel like he doesn't have an off switch no, uh, sometimes. You don't. I'm glad I'm not in the phase anymore. <laughs> nope. Okay, we're, we're switching over to Ego. What's up? Ego. Well, tomorrow, first of all, you and Keisha are going to be married for 20 years. 20 years. It's a 20 big old 2 and oh. I'm just going to say this, and this I feel like this is fair game, but the two <laughs> questions that Eric always gets, because I asked him first and foremost, yeah. well, first of all, he has he's old enough to have a grandchild that's your son's age. <laughs> 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 People don't realize that. his son. Yes. You have a son that's 25. Yes, sir. Yeah. And they're, he's married. You could definitely have a kid. I could be a grandparent. But you look anyway. like you're 25. <laughs> Thank, so. you. Thank you. So you always look younger. And then you were born in Mexico, but you don't speak. You don't speak Spanish. Well, thank you for pointing that out. Those are two questions you always get asked, doesn't <laughs> yes. it? Yes. I mean, isn't it always? Yeah. It's always those two questions. I asked you that question the first yeah. time we met, and since I've been with you, everyone says the same thing. The same two questions. You How have a kid. Are you? That you have. You have a 25 year old. Yeah. How old are you? How old are you? <laughs> do you speak and, Spanish? And then, yeah, oh, are you from Texas? Oh, I was born in Mexico. Oh, do you speak Spanish? No, yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. Uh, but yeah, those I are the two questions endearing. I get. It's an, it's an uh, endearing yeah. feature of, of your life. But congrats yeah. on 20 years. Thank you. You and Keisha. And uh, so how are you going to celebrate? Uh, you know what? Tomorrow uh, we are going to just have a nice dinner and just call it an easy weekend. I think our easy Wednesday night. And then hopefully this weekend we'll be able to get out and go do something Sweet. special. Yeah. yeah. Trying to get that planned out right now. You got, you got dinner planned yet? Where are y'all going? I got a couple options. Uh, uh, looking at, of course, uh, Perry's. Can't go wrong with Perry's and, down the road here. Oh, yeah. That's great. Uh, and then uh, Brent put me on a Monarch. 
Yeah, oh, Monarch, Monarch in Dallas. That's where we celebrate our Yeah, so looking oh, yeah. at that place right now, and mm-hmm. those are the two kind of that I'm considering. Uh, yeah. We'll find out, I guess, whenever this airs, which one I picked. Perry's, yeah. Perry's is closer, which yes. is nice. Yeah, that's the nice part. We have a Wednesday night is at church night kiddos at church and stuff, yeah. so we want to we don't want to be too far away. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, yeah. we'll see where we end up. Yeah, Monarch is downtown on Elm Street here in Dallas, yeah. and it's in I can't remember the hotel building. It's a it's a big building. It's on the 49th floor. Mm-hmm. It's one of those cool experiences when you walk in, you valet, you walk into this big corporate office building, and there's a little station where they hand you champagne and direct you to the elevators. Nice. And so you're, t- you know, sipping champagne on the way up to the 49th floor. You get up there. Wow. It's a beautiful view of the city. Uh, it's a really well done. It's an upscale Italian place basically, nice. but uh, really well done. It's a great experience. Mm-hmm. Super crowded. A lot of uh, you know, hip, trendy people there oh, as yeah. well. But it's a great place. So to, you fit in. I did not fit well. <laughs> Uh, we, yeah, we were, we enjoyed it. It was great yeah, food, but it's cool. I, I felt, uh, you, and it's one of those weird experiences where you go to the bathroom, and it, the bathroom overlooks the city. Like you're sitting yeah. there, oh. going to the bathroom, and there's the city right there, and you're like, can they see me right now? Yeah. <laughs> They're probably looking in. So someone has a binos on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you would think that there's something somewhere, some camera angle. Yeah. That that they've got, but uh, Stephanie says she went into the um, uh, the women's restroom. And it was the same way. Like you walk mm-hmm. in there and go yeah, install, yeah. and there's a Glass. wide open window. Wow! But I guess that's the cool thing these days. It's a cool thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll see. I'll let you know if we go make to the it. Bathroom and let the whole yeah. world see. Apparently, <laughs> I guess <laughs> if that's of interest <laughs> to people, I, I would hope not. Uh, so, so 20 years. So you all have three kids total, though. You have yes, uh, mm-hmm. uh, two in high school still. Two in high school and one already graduated. Uh, and so 16, 18, 25. Yep. And a daughter-in-law, 24. So that's great. Yeah. Family's great. Family's growing. Yeah. It's uh, we're about to be empty nesters in a couple of years. And, uh, be yeah, your son's still going young. to ACU. Yep, I'm yeah. going to Outland Christian. Yeah, and so he's ex- uh, he's excited. He'll be going down in August. Um, and then my daughter will be right behind him. Yeah, same school. Wow, so it's awesome. It is. Um, <clears throat> so your your relationship with with me and with XO is unique because your role here is, I mean, you're essentially running running the ship while. I'm doing other things. A lot of times, I'm I'm operating at a higher level, and you're taking care of the team, taking care of the culture, all the operations. You're help, helping things move and shake, and um, really, you've done a phenomenal job of the last year of growing things and making things stronger and better, build back better. Uh, that's, that's an old <laughs> nice. that's an old saying I took from nice. uh, the president of the United States. I don't know where I'm going with that. It's <laughs> okay. I got, you I don't got need lost on my own rabbit <laughs> trail. Uh, <clears throat> so, <laughs> you and I started talking about, I don't know, three years ago. Yes. And Doug Stamps, shout out to Doug. Shout out to sh- Doug. Shout out today. Yeah. Uh, we need to have a little counter at the bottom. How many, yes. Yeah. How many shout outs we give. But Absolutely. Doug Stamps is an amazing man. Goes to Keystone. And yes. His wife, Angelia, are great friends. Uh, he introduced me to you because we were looking for a position here. Uh, chief Operating Officer of just really somebody that could come in and help. Mm-hmm. Uh, shoulder the load that I was feeling uh, running the operations. So we started talking, had a great conversation at a Starbucks. I think that was our first meeting was mm-hmm. at Starbucks. Got to know each other. And then I think I ghosted you for a while. You did. I think it was around, <laughs> I want to say it was around eight months. I didn't hear wow. from you. Yeah. Around eight Not months. Not a word. Well, th- there was, I think there was a, a Hey, hope all is well, more or less text, like just checking up on you. Yeah. How are you doing? And I, I think he did that out of uh, yeah, I uh, like, <laughs> I don't want to leave this guy completely yes. hanging. Um, <laughs> well, hell, I, I was interviewing several people, but I, I you were one of the ones that I was initially talking to. It was just such an important role. And I didn't really know how to uh, quantify what I was looking for. And it really took time. So we I think we met up again. Uh-huh. And we had a follow up conversation. And then I just was always needing somebody, and there was all these people I was talking to. But I realized that I was just uh, uh, gun shy, you know, just Mm -hmm. not willing to pull the the trigger on on it because I was fearful that this was such an important role that I would bring somebody in and it wouldn't work out, and then it's a a messy exit at at that Mm -hmm. level. Uh, Those were my inner, inner thoughts, but I still needed somebody so bad. So finally, it was such a random time and place. You didn't even know what I was Mm-mm. texting you for. But we met up at Cool Greens. Shout out to Cool Greens. Cool Greens. Over on 1709 here in South Lake. <laughs> you know, I haven't tried that spot. I hear it's good. good, though. Yeah, good so, spot. little sidebar trivia. A couple that owned that were awesome. 
Uh, they had lived internationally as missionaries. They came wow. back. They started this place. They were always there, always on top of things. They were awesome. They just recently sold it. It's not as good. Uh, uh, it, uh, that's disappointing. Sorry we're if you've seen cool me at Cool Greens. It's not that I don't hate, I don't hate it, <laughs> but it's not as good as it was because they were very attentive to detail. Yeah. Now well, it just were. feels like it a... It was fantastic. Yeah. It, it really was. I mean, it, it's just a, a walk-in, walk-out more or less place, like a Chipotle or something, yeah. but... The, the way that they made you feel walking in and out, it felt like a Chick-fil-A almost. Yeah. It felt great. Yeah, it is. So that's where we met for lunch. Had a follow-up conversation. You didn't know I was wanting to talk to you about uh, coming on board. And essentially, we, we put um, that lunch, kind of put things in motion to bring you in. I think that was around April that we met. Mm-hmm. And you started so no second interview. First interview, ghost him, bring him back. No, there He's was a board. couple discussions. I think I, I think it was Starbucks two or three times. Uh, okay. And then it was many mm-hmm. months in between. Uh, I think when I say many months, it was like a year. I think, I think there was <laughs> 12 a months to be exact. Was, I think there was a, around 12 months, and that was during the year 2020. So it was yeah. the, it was during COVID. Yeah, right? there was, it was a lot, pretty, well, there was I mean, a lot going on. Too, the pandemic. So, yeah. Or you had the pandemic happen, and so I think that kind of I, I understood, you know, because I, at that point you had had to con- uh, you, there was no conferences happening. There was mm-hmm. nothing as far as uh, a lot of movement on that side of it, and mm-hmm. so um, I, I never put it to put it to rest though. I, I kind of knew in my heart that. It, for me, it was always kind of like uh, I was going to say yes. I mean, because it was one th- something that my wife and I had prayed about. It was something we talked about a lot. And I pretty much told her if he comes back and says it and he says, hey, I would love to bring you on. I'm mm-hmm. going to say yes. Um, and but then, you know, regardless, of, I don't want to say regardless what the salary is, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but, you know, but we're reg- pretty much regardless of what it is, we're going to say yes. We're going to take the leap of faith. Yeah. Uh, because I came from corporate world where everything was comfortable. Everything was, mm-hmm. I had, I was well established in a career. Yeah. 19 uh, years, right? Yeah, 19 yeah. years. Yeah. And so I uh, worked at Nokia. And so t- I knew I was going to say yes. And so the, the, the lunch at Cool Greens was just, yeah, it was nice to finally have that uh, confirmation that you were ready. Yeah. And, and we said yes and uh, started on June 1st yeah. last year. Well, I think some of the cool things were, were that, when we first started talking, your life was in Paradise, Texas. Paradise, Texas. Yes, you were, sir. You were, you know, driving in. Um, your your world was different. My world's a little mm-hmm. bit different. So it really mapped out to be God's perfect timing, I believe. Yeah. My personal belief in that. It was an awkward uh, kind of courting process. But again, for that position, it was uh, really important to me that I knew the person that was coming in because I needed to lean on them fairly heavily. Yeah. And you got pretty much day one thrown into <laughs> the deep end of the pool and uh, there was a lot of um, uh, responsibility thrown your way right right away but that was good I think I think you did a great job of coming in learning the system there's no yeah. better way to learn than just jumping man. straight in yeah. just jump in and learn how to swim yeah, I came in one week uh, you know for second week of February the next week we had the big old conference down in Houston and so yeah. not even seven days in I'm going to uh, play a part in our first big conference so that was pretty cool that was you know like, like you said greatest learning experience you could probably have just because I believe our conferences are a really nice encapsulation of who we are and what we're trying to do and what our mission is. And so being able to see that both from the back end, but also the front end, because I'd never been to a conference before. Um, I think that was what kickstarted my whole learning process, which is really cool. Yeah, we, we have a, a lot of new team members here mm-hmm. at XO. Um, and again, I think that's kind of like God's design because we're in such a new season. Uh, the the vision that I have for the organization is fresh and new. It doesn't leave behind all of that we've built upon, mm-hmm. uh, my dad's content, those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Yep. But it's definitely going to stretch people away from some of the traditional means that we used to have. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, you know, traditional Christian television, direct mail, those, mm-hmm. those approaches to uh, ministry, fundraising, whatever it is. To now shifting to things where we're talking about crazy things, yeah. you know, how do we how do we um, turn you know content into you know, viral videos mm-hmm. that will help to drive not just ministry but but the the resources of the yeah. ministry as well, mm-hmm. the building project which mm-hmm. all were part of the groundbreaking and part of all of that, I mean that's a that's a, a very monumental time for the ministry that y'all are coming up to be a part of. That's mm-hmm. a new dimension of the ministry as well yeah. that, that I believe God's kind of prepared the team and built the team for that that time period. It's going up right now over across the highway. It's you it's can see the, mm-hmm. the all the machines and, and they're about to start pouring concrete. Yep. It's a great time of the ministry. So I do I do feel like you guys specifically, but also a lot of the, the team now, um, 
uh, we're all sort of, you know, getting battle tested and ready for what's about to come because mm-hmm. it's, uh, it, in my opinion, XO is only going to get better and better. Yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's on a springboard right now. Like, and I feel like, uh, I think at a time we felt like we're here, uh, but I think now we're here because there's just so much. I think our level of, of um, content, our level of uh, production, I think it's just going to continue to increase. Even with the new building, man, it's just going to open up so many cool doors for us. Shout out to Ed Young. It's going to go to a whole mm, another, another level. level. He does take it there. Ding. Yes. <laughs> yes, we do need a bell right here. Just a Ding. Yeah. Shout out. I mean, you know, Fellowship Church, the conference we had there yeah. was, was incredible. It was amazing. And uh, that, that lineup, it felt coming out of COVID, coming out of a weird season of conferences, it felt like it was back to normal. Uh, it was one of our best conferences I think mm-hmm. we've ever we've ever had, just in terms sure. of spirit and content and the camaraderie of everyone. Y'all have gotten to know a lot of our speakers, mm-hmm. a lot of the people behind the scenes too. The culture and the feeling of what we're doing is is special. It just yeah. is. It just you can't you can't fabricate it. It has to happen organically and it yep. really has happened mm-hmm. that way. You have people like the Willis's that you know are, are interacting with you know uh, Dan Leanne and, and all of our speakers, and they genuinely like each other, enjoy being around one mm-hmm. another, they enjoy uh, coming to conferences when they're together. Yeah. It's like friends, and yeah, 100%. it's not just a hey, we're hiring people to come in and speak at yeah. a conference. Uh, it's not just a TED Talk feel. It's no, this is special because everyone here wants to be here first. Yeah, uh, purpose. Yeah, that's the coolest thing I've seen. Just with speakers and outside, I've I've worked a lot with like athletes and things like that, um, agents and whatnot. And it's a very different vibe. I've never been on the the conference side of things where it's like speakers who we have a personal relationship with and things like that. But uh, I think Naroop and, and Dan have said it best. Like even when uh, they're not speaking, they enjoy being there, consuming the conference. But also, just they look forward to our conferences because it's a time for them to get together. Mm. Oh like, yeah, you know. Yeah, they. I think that's what's been real neat to kind of put together the roster that we have, right? And it, it is kind of like a team roster. I think of like the old Bulls team, right? You mm-hmm. know, I think of the old Lakers. I yeah. think of you know, and you know, you, every one of those teams had. Yeah, of course, you had your MJs and stuff like that, but each one of them had, you know, their specialty, right? Steve Kerr was a three-point specialist. You had Dennis Rodman, who was a rebound specialist, right? You had Luke Longley, who just took charges, right? I mean, it was kind of like built for success, all right? And, and they, they accounted for all these different dimensions of the games. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we're doing now, right? And yeah. I think that's when you talk about kind of like the, the lid that we have, mm-hmm. that this potential, like we're, we're, we have so much room to grow, is the best is yet to come, right? And so yeah. for XO, and I think that's where... Uh, and usually you gain that lift and you gain that, that you gain that space by bringing in new people, mm-hmm. right? With new talents, n- you know, different seasons, but, uh, the building and then we got the picture there, the land, mm-hmm. um, that building is going to get, just r- give us so much more capacity to do more, Oh yeah. whether it's shooting new, cool new, uh, mm-hmm. podcast or YouTube series or bringing in Q and a type sessions. Yeah. I just think that there, that it raises the lid. And so, now we have all of this, like a sandbox to play in. And um, and so what do we get to do with it, right? And it's a sandbox. So some of it's gonna be built, some of it might fall, mm-hmm. uh, but a lot of it's gonna stick. And I think that's what's really neat to kind of, when I look at the land and I think like, okay, we have this sandbox, what are we gonna do with it now? We, and we use that, we use the term R&D a lot. Like mm-hmm. We use it, we t- use that a lot. Yeah. Cause we are R&D, right? Mm-hmm. We are trying to see what sticks, what doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the people's tastes and what people want to do, yep. it changes. It, feel, it is so Changing rapid, so it's, it's rapid. Yeah. Um, you know, and my background is software, right? My background is mobile broadband, working for Nokia for 19 years and then working into software development. Um, and into end more or less feature releases. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and so that was, we're always on the front end, whether it was 2G back in the day with Edge, if you take it back guys, if you had an old 2G phone, um, or if you moved to 3G, UMTS, mm-hmm. LTE, 4G, 5G as you moved into it, we were always on the front end trying to predict and anticipate what people were needing out there. And it's no different now. It's no different than yeah. the position I'm in now. I'm uh, The position that I'm in with this team now is we're trying to anticipate as this world is oh, so it's 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 hard, it's broken, it's yeah. challenging. There's so much suffering in the world. How do we help them? How do we how do we anticipate what's coming? How do we so that we're not reacting to the hurt? We're we're, we're actually ahead of it. We're yeah. actually a little bit ahead of it and pr- providing it to them as they need it. So well, I think one of the things that you know, for for an organization, we don't lead with the the hurt side of the ministry. We don't mm-hmm. lead with, hey, your your marriage is in crisis. Come 
come talk to us. Yeah. We lead with more of the fun side mm-hmm. of marriage, the, the yep. date nights, the honeymoon si- the mm-hmm. honeymoon phases, the content I mean, about sex and about romance, about intimacy. Because so, I want marriage to be fun, but we also have the mediation side right. of the ministry yep. that's there for people when they when they need help. Mm-hmm. So that, that's, that's the balance of what we're doing is mm-hmm. how do we showcase and minister to people uh, at a high level mm-hmm. and cover all these different topics mm-hmm. in a relevant way, yep. but also make sure people get... Yeah. really strong help yeah. mm-hmm. if their marriage is on the verge of divorce. Yep. So that's a that's a very difficult yeah. from a brand perspective, that's a very difficult mm-hmm. uh, counterbalance and how do you how do you yeah. operate in both uh, places? Mm-hmm. I think the conference is the, is the is the one way that I can visibly see it happening in real time mm-hmm. because people are coming and they're in all different stages mm-hmm. of their marriage. Some yep. people are just brand new married. Shout out to Maggie. Ding. Ding. Uh, who's in the, the room. Her and her <laughs> husband Max just got married. They were at the conference and they're sort of new. I mean, the, yeah. the, in marriage that the, the content for them felt different. Mm-hmm. I knew people that were coming to the conference that had been married for, uh, you know, 20 plus years that were contemplating divorce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the content feels very different for them, but it's, it's still a, the Holy Spirit uses it all and is able to apply it. 100%. But whenever yeah. somebody's talking about mediation on stage, what somebody might tune out, another person's tuning in, mm-hmm. and you're always kind of dialing in and dialing out yep. these conversations mm-hmm. that people can, um, yeah. want, number one, enjoy, but number two, uh, utilize for their marriage, which I think is important. It's it's by design. It's not accidental. None of yep. it's accidental. Mm-hmm. We work hard at the... At mm-hmm. the uh, ministry here to make sure everything is well done yep. at an excellent level, but highly effective. And that's yep. what I think that's what keeps us uh, a little bit ahead of um, of some of the conference game, some of the content game mm-hmm. for what we're doing is because we're thinking through it on a strategic level, not just on a, oh, well, let's just try this level kind of yep. thing. Yeah, yeah. Con- that conference, uh, the, from the theming to the speakers to the... Um, to the praying to the seats, right? Over mm-hmm. the seats as we, you know, as we do every time. I mean, it, I mean, we're months, we're a year ahead right now. You know, it's, was it March, March 22, <laughs> March 22nd, we're sorry, planning. we're March and we're, we have 23, we, yeah. we, you know, we have an idea what 23 looks like. Uh, we're getting it ready now. Mm-hmm. Um, and trying to be prayerful, of course, we're always prayerful, but being prayerful about what does God want to push through the ministry? Yeah. What, what is that next, you know, thing that he wants to use us for? Uh, and I think that's the cool thing about XO is yeah. that we have so many creative minds yep. um, and, and such a creative team. But then we have also people that just know how to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have people that just know how to execute uh, at a high level of excellence. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the neat thing about working here has been, um, you know, we're not trying to replace the church. Like that's not our role. Uh, um, our role is not to replace the church. Mm-hmm. Our, our, but it is kingdom work. It is ministry mm-hmm. work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you know we take it serious. Everyone here, we take our own personal uh, walk and our and our relationship with Jesus serious. And so it, it's not something that we that we forget about. Yeah. It, yep. It's always at the core of it. It's yep. always at the core of it. For sure. Yeah. And I think just um, you know back to where you're talking about the balance between the two. I think uh, that's been the cool thing about XO is how. We leverage both of those two. Like, what we don't want people to do is only come to us when you have a problem. I think marriage is one of those things where it is an everyday, um, an everyday effort uh, on both parts in order to get uh, where you want to go in marriage, to be able to communicate effectively, um, raise a family together, uh, work through differences. And so um, on the front side of it, we're always, the the content we develop is so unique and so practical uh, that you can come to us and just um, start to uh, find ways in which you can apply some of these learnings, these teachings from uh, people like Jimmy uh, and people like like Dave and Ashley uh, into your marriage, but we're also here in the event you are going through a situation or a crisis or something in need. We can kind of help facilitate both of those. We want to equip people uh, to be able to tackle those problems before they get there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's that's our, uh, not solution, but the, our battle in terms of how do we get people to not think about divorce? Uh, because once you get to that crisis level, that's when you start to bring that word up. But if you can tackle a lot of those issues along the way and build up to something that doesn't require you to maybe get to that 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 low of a point in a situation um that's i think the heart behind uh how i viewed our ministry and and the content that we produce and the way that we produce it and in the way that we showcase it at conference that's why a lot of the the messages we have at conference from a lot of our speakers they just they speak to so many different avenues because it's Mm -hmm. all it's also impactful uh within your marriage no matter what situation you're in Mm -hmm. but then when like sean lynette uh another shout out there ding um when they come up and talk about the 
mediation program mm-hmm. that we have and how it can help you or how it can empower you to help others uh, in your community as well. Um, I think that's such a cool facet of our ministry that we've just barely started to tap into. Mm-hmm. So I agree. Yeah. To, to build an army of mediators that, that are equipped and trained in how to handle crisis situations with mm-hmm. exo resources and that it's, it's working in, in you know congruence with everything else that we're mm-hmm. doing across the nation. Yeah, you know churches are equipped, couples find hope. Uh, it really is a it's it's a big idea, but it's it's something that's attainable. Uh, I think in the next season of the ministry, yep. uh, which 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 I'm I'm excited about. Uh, okay, so you know life with with kids and uh, being in the season. Uh, we, we you know your kids are older, so that you're in the fun. So much fun though. Fun phase. <laughs> it is. It is. It's it's a blast. You know with. Uh, I said two teenagers, one adult, and he's he's killing it right right now. Uh, uh, Brandon is just absolutely just just climbing, just doing everything that you pray your kids going to do. Right? Mm-hmm. He's going to be a responsible young man. He's going to be he's going to love Jesus. He's going to uh, honor his wife. He's going to provide for his wife, support his wife. Um, he's a smart. Uh, he's a smart kid. I call him a kid. Twenty five year old. I sat next to him at the conference, <laughs> and man, he he was sharp. He, sharp, sharp. He's uh, he's one of those. He, he's uh, my brother-in-law is a data scientist, literally a data scientist. And uh, when he gets going, you know, it's kind of hard to keep up, right? When you're talking to someone who's that yeah. at, at that level of you know detail, uh, and Brain is the same thing. And that's what he wants to go to grad school for. Uh, he went to Harding in Arkansas, great school. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, uh, but now he's focused on his career, yep. and so he's killing it. And so, but it's really it's different seasons. Like with him, I just give him kind of like, you know encouragement and every once in a while who asks me a question you know hey wh- how do you approach this you know in yeah. business like i get more business questions now than i get like <laughs> hey dad you you know uh what do you think of this fl- you know philosophy on this uh, n- n- not a lot of that it's yeah. more kind of like what do you think how should i word this email yes mm-hmm. okay um, approach it this way yeah um and then but with my 18 year old 16 year old um you know that it's different right we're still but it's also no longer just parenting. I'm no longer kind of like saying, hey, don't touch the oven because it's hot, mm-hmm. right? You, I don't want you to burn yourself. Yep, that's not, the phase I'm in right now. <laughs> yes, it's not that. It's more, you know, because you know, they're both dating, you know, so now we're talking about how do you date? Mm-hmm. You know, we, we date with the intention of marriage at the end of it. We're not just dating to date. Um, you know, how do you... Um, see the dignity in everyone. How do you mm-hmm. see the dignity in her? How do you see the dignity in him? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how do you not gossip? I think that's one of the biggest things. Well, like, I don't. How do you, this this age group coming through high school right now. My daughter's a freshman. The the technology side of it is so uh, pervasive. Uh, with yes. snap. The, yeah, the gossip side of it, the the vanity side of it, yes. the, mm-hmm. um, the 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 rudeness side of it. You know, you can just trash people. On social media, like you can trash them, yes. no, yeah. no way else. Uh-huh. And just I, the trauma, the mental trauma, the the, uh, the, the the what we're producing out of that crop of kids after they've just gone through a pandemic, and you know, now yes. social media is a fabric of their of their society. Mm-hmm. Little, I don't want to be the the generation that's always like, man, these kids, I worry about them. You know, this this generation <laughs> coming up, but it's just it is weird yes. to mm-hmm. to see what they're experiencing at such a young age. Mm-hmm. The the intensity of it, just the the complexity of it, mm-hmm. it's very 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 it's challenging. Real. And as yeah. a parent, how to coach them through that? Yeah, you have to, you just have to go back, back to the basics. How do you be a good person? Have good character? Mm-hmm. Make yeah. good choices. You can really screw up your life very quickly these days by doing something stupid online. Yeah. You know, first step is getting expelled from school. Second step is getting you know getting your 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 name trashed mm-hmm. uh, and or going to prison and that's quick these days i mean there's mm-hmm. there's things that you can do with a computer or a phone that can really get yourself in trouble that trying to teach your kids that now yeah you could trash to, your reputation before you even started yes like right now you know you could post something on you know out there and it's going to or it's going to ruin a chance that might a door that might open for you later yeah. as they find it because it lives on forever and so that that is a different walk right now for him. I'm so glad that we didn't have social media back when we were mm. in the 90s. Oh my goodness, I was such a bad kid. I, <laughs> well, I would have never have made it this far in my life. Well, you know, when I was, I don't know, my son is 10, or one of my sons is 10. You know, when I was that age to 13, there there really was no access to bad things, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The closest I ever got to that stuff was like every once in a while, HBO would have a free weekend and there'd be some <laughs> shows on or whatever. And that's whenever, you know, you're, as a kid, you're sneaky or whatever. Just being real. 
<laughs> uh, so uh, we're going to edit this out, uh, B Rock. No, we're going to keep it. No, that stays in. The, uh, <laughs> so it's true. I mean, you just didn't have yeah, access yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Now, my son, uh, we have an extra phone just we use for like emergencies or whatever. Uh, and he was on there, was texting some kid he met from Fortnite. Words I've never said before, but some <laughs> random kid he met. From, it's, a, it's a friend of his cousin that he, he knew from Fortnite. He was texting him, but a, a spam text came in. Mm, he clicked mm. the link, and it took him to uh, some horrible images of oh, wow. two adults mm. uh, really getting intimate. And some you know images that I didn't want him to yeah, see at course. 10 years old. Yeah. And so I told him, I said, first of all, rule number one, never click. Never click on one of those. A link. You don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Like, that's spam. They, they, they're desperate. That's life rule 101. Yes. If you don't know who it's from, don't click the on second, it. The second I was just asking, what did you see? What was it? And he was like, I knew immediately when I saw it, I shouldn't see it. I clicked out of it. He said, I'm so sorry. I said, but, you know, let's mm-hmm. talk about it. You know, he's getting to the age where he's noticing things. And those are conversations that are difficult as parents mm-hmm. because you're trying not to you want your kids to be kids and let them have the opportunity to learn lessons, but you're also not wanting them to see the filth that's out there yep. and mm-hmm. keep them from the, I mean, it's horrible out there on the internet. Um, and it really can just be, you're going about your business and all of a sudden you're just looking at stuff, especially as if my daughter's 14. I don't want her to see uh, stuff that's out there. No, 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 no. Yeah. Even if it's some of the images that are posted on Instagram that are just, people full of themselves, you know, just posting, you know, shots of their body or shots of their uh, relationships, their friendships, whatever it is, it can sometimes get really gross really quick. Yeah. And, and and I just don't want that to be uh, always in front of my kids. So how do you do that without keeping them away from social media, which is also a byproduct of their uh, interaction with their friends? Yeah, it's, it's a challenge these days. I think the, the, the term helicopter parent it gets tossed around a lot right now. What's funny is like when you're younger, when we were younger, we we're like, hey, we're not going to be helicopter parents. We're just mm. not going to be helicopter parents. Yeah. And we are completely helicopter parents. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, uh, we get the the comments, you know, like, well, you're the only parents that ever. We're not. I guarantee no, it. No, I guarantee we're not the yeah. only parents. Okay. Uh, but we, you know, we, de- we, we have taken it very serious. Social media. Uh, protecting their eyes. Uh, and I mean, of course, every kid, every young person, if you want access, you have the access if mm. you really want to. And of course, so, you know, you try to point them right. Uh, I, I stole some, you know, from Mark Driscoll a long time ago was pulling down heaven to a moment or pulling up hell to a moment, mm. right? And, and, to, and the, pretty much to your words, to your eyes, to your whatever you look at, to whatever you say to people. And so that's kind of been one of the things that I've always tried to tell them. Um, you know, and it's because it's something that I've applied in my life that has worked. Yep. And so for the most part, I feel like we've done a good job. And so thank God, you know, you I mean, great great, oh and gosh, so yes. uh, they are, they're fantastic. Um, and, you know, they have a lot of opportunity and, and nothing's been taken away from them because they've made some wise decisions. But it doesn't take away still the, dis- the temptations because they still mm-hmm. have desires. They still want to be on social media. They still want to be able to talk with their friends via Snap or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And so just of recent, we've kind of started loosening yeah. up on that, yeah. um, you know, before they, you know, as we get into their 16 to 18 year old mm-hmm. age. Uh, but we were, we were, we moved to paradise. You mentioned paradise. We moved to paradise because we wanted to get away from the city. Yeah. We moved to paradise because we wanted acreage and we wanted to live, uh, the, the little, you know, house on the prairie type mm-hmm. land, you country know, life. country life, mm-hmm. horses, donkeys, chickens, all of it. And it was a blast. It was great. I mean, and it was, it was great because there was, there wasn't a lot of distractions. So there was a lot of family time. There was, so we got to yeah. invest, invest, invest. Uh, and as we did that, I, I think that that was one of the things that, I think for us, it really kind of worked in our family mm-hmm. to help build them to where they are now. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, but uh, the, being the helicopter parent, uh, don't be ashamed of it. Own it, own it, own it, own it. Uh, we now own that. And so yeah. we're trying to loosen up on it. Yeah. No, you'd rather, <coughs> these days, you'd rather go to that extreme rather than to the oh, extreme yeah. of yeah. don't care, you do whatever you want, uh, to the point where you're, you're drinking with your kids just so you're using an excuse. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> at least they were drinking with me and not at some yeah. random place. We're there right now because we're going. We're taking uh, Eli on his senior trip to Mexico. Mm. What part of Mexico? Uh, Playa. Playa. So, oh, and, so, uh, and so, uh, but legal age is 18, so... Yeah. In Mexico. In Mexico. Not in the States. But we're in Mexico. So what do you do? Yeah. I won't tell you what we're doing, but I'm just going to say <laughs> that we, it was a long discussion. Yes. It was yes. a long discussion. And, you know, it was um, uh, prayer and everything. And we landed on it somewhere and we're going to move with that. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, 
I'm thinking about Playa right now and being there. Mm. Never <gasps> been back. Come on. That, that used to, dude, Playa used to be, Cancun, Playa used to be where me and my wife would always go for our um, hunt, uh, anniversary. Mm. So every July, sometime in July, we take a week out there, sit on the beach, do absolutely nothing. I love that. Have mm. a few. Yeah. In, in college, I was at Baylor uh, with spring break. Friend, my friend and I went to Mazatlan mm-hmm. on some, we bought it from some shady travel agency in Dallas. <laughs> we went on a no-name charter plane with a bunch of it other just college said kids. Yeah, just, said, just said plane. Just said <laughs> aeroporto. <laughs> Somewhere out there yeah. pulling the prop. You're trying it to was, get to fire. It was a scary flight. But, you know, we didn't care. We got there. And I mean, there was enough Corona to live on, you know, mm. for weeks on end. And yes, just, it was a you know all inclusive place. And I was 18 at the time, and I thought to myself, my parents they let me go, but I thought to myself, now I would never want my kids to do what I did. <laughs> Mazatlan is no, no bueno. Yes, no, it's not a good place now. I mean, I'm not trying to. I'm not throw sure it. it was good then. <laughs> well, I, no, it wasn't good then. But it, you didn't know any different. Yes, you just you, now you do. You were it was Partyville. Uh, and that's the season of my life that I'm not proud of, but okay. it, it did it's happen. Okay. Mazatlan did happen. And, uh, but I think, I think about my kids and I'm like, ah, I, I would be more the helicopter parent of mm. ain't no way. Not on my dime. No. Yeah. Mm. If you're an adult mm. now, you can make your decisions, but if that's yep. your decision, there may be some additional consequences <laughs> from yeah. of the financial side, because I just don't want to encourage that, that yep. those mistakes. Cause I, you know, you think through your life and you think about, you know, opportunities you had to, to, to do things. Uh, the right way or do things kind of the wild way, which mm-hmm. I did for a while. And I just, uh, you know, I'm fortunate that I didn't do anything to ruin my life because mm-hmm. I could have, Yeah. you know, uh, there's a lot of opportunities I could have uh, taken to even in my life. I mean, it was just, it was that crazy of a time in my life where I was just kind of wheels off and I don't want my kids to deal with that. Yeah. So whatever you can do to, to avoid that. I think that. that's where the kids get, they say, I think for the kids, uh, sometimes it feels unfair because you're trying to protect them for what you did, of course. And mm-hmm. so then they say, like, well, I'm not you, you know, yeah. or, you know, we, we don't live in that area. Or, you know, you know, that's not a, a risk for me. Yeah. Um, but I think it is. Mm-hmm. You know, those are those things where, you know, I, I do believe that as parents, you know, you kind of go through experiences and you go through things that that you ha- that God specifically had you go through yeah. so that you can help your kids or mm-hmm. whoever it is that's going to be within your circle to help them walk through it, your testimony mm-hmm. about that. So those are the things that we, you know, we try to walk them through. But Mexico, man, I mean, Mexico is one of those places, like you said, if you, if you go by yourself, it was on, if it was on their dime, yeah, it's on you, and you not on me. Like, yeah, yeah, like no, you said, no, that's, exactly. I think you said that perfectly. If, it, if it's something that I'm, if I'm carrying, uh, covering on me, then nope. no, no, yeah, no, it's not happening. Yeah, no, I agree with that. We watched this weekend uh, with my boys. This is a fun season. I'm sure you probably watched it with your son, Dax, too, but we watched the latest Spider-Man movie. Uh, uh, no Way no way, no way Home. No Way Home. Yeah. And I don't geek out very often, but it was it's it's a pretty cool it's a pretty cool movie. I saw it at the theaters, but we watched it again. I was like, they did a good job Dude, on this. Dude, I am behind the eight ball because I have not watched it yet. I know so it just no came spoilers. out. I need to. No That's spoilers. No, no spoilers. spoilers. Five months after the movie has come out. Because <laughs> okay. I got to still watch it. Well, I'll just say this. Um, the, the greatest actor in that whole movie, William Defoe. 100% agree just because I've read the reviews on his acting in that movie and I was a big Goblin fan when that first came mm-hmm. out when he was the first I was like no one's ever going to do it better um, but I can't wait to see his performance he, um, it's it's really you know there's that one uh, clip of him I'm somewhat of a scientist myself <laughs> and uh, he, he delivers on that line again but his just how he could turn from uh, Osborne into the Goblin so yeah. quick. Yeah, his like, facial expressions. Oh, oh. Uh, like the, the the way that his eyebrows raise, the yeah. way that his cheekbones, voice so inflections. Yeah. yeah, I mean, all of it is just. It's I mean, when you great. think about how long uh, in between those movies, but it felt like he never left the role at all. Yeah. It just felt like he just stepped in from the last movie and continued on his sequence. That's the crazy part about um, that whole kind of just actors in general, that good actors that can do that, that can live through a role and make that a part of who they are. Because yeah. then when you're like, hey, William, do you mind coming and being the goblin again? Boom. Immediately ready to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's pretty wild. I can't wait to see it. I've heard yeah. that. Great movies. Things. You got to go watch it. I didn't now. watch the Andrew Garfield <laughs> Spider-Man. Movies. They're great. They're fancy. The, the Amazing Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they're great. I I don't know. They didn't get great reviews, and I was like, ah, I don't know if I'm into Andrew Garfield as a Spider-Man. 
Uh, mm. And we were watching it with, with my daughter and wife as well. And they were like, oh my gosh, Andrew Garfield is by far the cutest Spider-Man. I was like, <laughs> really? The guy from Social Network? And they're like, yes. I was like, not Tom Holland? No. He's he's okay, but Andrew Garfield. I was like, what about Tobey Maguire? <laughs> you know, uh, which you know, <laughs> Tobey Maguire. <laughs> Tobey Maguire was actually you know the OG. OG man, for me. man I, I, yeah, I liked him. Mm-hmm. Was, I thought Spider-Man. he was perfectly cast I back when it came out, man. I was like, wow, if I imagined Peter Parker, it would be Tobey Maguire. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And Kristen Dunst is uh, oh. MJ. It was yes, perfect. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a very good casting. Like if. Because I, I, I grew up reading the comic books, and yeah. so I could picture what if a real Spider-Man, real Peter Parker, who he was. That was exactly who I was picturing. Now, with like Andrew Garfield and, and Tom Holland, I never really pictured them as a true um, Peter Parker, like from the comics. Mm-hmm. Uh, they never really fit that bill for me, but they've done ex- excellent jobs in the role. Uh, but Toby is the OG. I think that was where it's at. But if you watch that like movie, a, Molly's Game, have you ever seen that movie, Molly's yes, Game? Yes, that's a good, no, that's a good movie. You know, they base that one character on Tobey Maguire. Yes. So yeah. I'm watching it. This is not something my kids know. You know, I haven't watched <laughs> that movie, but I'm just thinking, if the way they depict that player in the movie Molly's Game is Tobey Maguire, that dude <laughs> not seen is him. a jerk. This yes, is a PG-13 uh, podcast, so I can say jerk. You can he say is that, a yeah. jerk. Yes. It was, uh, it was not a, a him in his greatest light. Uh, no, they said that he was just torture people. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, that, that was also a great movie. But he was a big gambler. Yeah. yeah, he was big. And it's it pretty wild. The movie it's it's about um, how this girl named Molly started this like underground poker tournament for like the high end clients. Oh, I think I've seen the. I'm on um, the trailer for this. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so it was a really well done movie. Well um, done, yeah. yeah, and so I just elbows in there. A lot of mm-hmm. People like that. Yeah, I just uh, next double O. I hope so. I'd uh, love that. I really would love to see that. Oh, the the guy from Fast and Furious. He was in the yes, last one, the right? Last one. He was. Uh, what is he in? Oh, he's been uh, a he's ton, in a ton oh, yeah. of Oh, he's uh, in Thor. He's, he's in, yeah, he's uh-huh. Thor. He's uh, for, the, I forgot his name. The gatekeeper yeah. guy. Yeah, yes. Put the sword in. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. But yeah, so I think he would be a great double O. Oh, he would be fantastic. Yeah. And he's British, you know, those yeah. guys. Though it's always freaks me out when I'm watching a movie and somebody, like Walking Dead, for example, Rick, mm-hmm. the sheriff, yeah. main guy. Totally British, you, 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 yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, oh, the, the way British. they turn on those accents, man. It's a total show about the uh, about the zombies. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I yeah, that was. I don't know. Was, I don't know. That wasn't was, anything. I, <laughs> I can only do I, like, give me a scone. Edit that one out. E. <laughs> give me a scone and some zombies. <laughs> uh, my, my, oh god. My my uh, accents go in and out. Uh, you know the the thing about being from Texas. Uh, you know I don't really have a Texas accent. Cause I I'm know from, I'm from Amarillo. I know you are. And there's Amarillo. a lot of people that talk real country, and I, <laughs> I could probably turn that on quicker. But uh, I don't talk. I don't have an. It's accent. great. I, so a lot of people say I don't have an accent. English. I didn't learn English till the second grade. Uh, first, late first grade, second grade, because I grew up. I'm first generation Vietnamese, and so my parents immigrated over here. And growing up, always all they spoke was Vietnamese. So going into like school, going into pre-K, kindergarten. Like I literally had no conversations with anybody because I just didn't know how to speak English. Um, but um, going into first grade was when uh, my mom, she was a manicurist. Uh, one of her clients was uh, the ESL teacher at the school. Uh, Miss Lay, shout out to her. She taught me and both my brothers English. Um, amazingly, somehow we didn't come out with any accents. Um, but uh, it was pretty pretty crazy to look back because I, I can't really remember like first grade what it was like. Um, or like kindergarten, not being able to like talk to anyone. Go into school, you play, you take your nap, you eat your snack, you go home. It's, the good thing about that age range is there's a lot of just natural, you know, joyful you know, playfulness. You know, yes, water is kind of you can make a sound, just like, huh, hey, you know, yes, don't, do, <laughs> don't say anything. You can you can showcase what you want without any fear yeah, exactly. of embarrassment or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, going on the playground, jumping around, whatever it is. Uh, so do you still speak Vietnamese? Yeah, I still do. I speak because uh, my parents most fami- like they both speak English for uh, uh, pretty well now, um, but they're more comfortable speaking Vietnamese. So usually I'll like start the conversation in English and then I'll kind of just migrate to Vietnamese. Uh, a lot of the reason I do that is also so like my wife, if she's you know there, she can also kind of understand, track along with the conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but naturally it always gravitates back to Vietnamese only because that's what they're like. That's how they can best communicate. They know more words in Vietnamese. 
days. Um, and so I'm like a hybrid now. Hmm. Uh, but growing up, because both my grandparents lived with us in our house, uh, grew up in uh, Pleasant Grove out in um, East Dallas, PG. the good old PG. PG. Um, made it out of those uh, those burbs. Um, but uh, it was uh, just growing up, um, all of my family, like all of our extended family and, and friends, they were all Vietnamese because uh, it's kind of like when you grow up in that that community, it's mm-hmm. just you know, stick pretty closely. And so, uh, growing up, we were just all my friends. We all spoke Vietnamese, mm-hmm. um, and then it's pretty wild because we, uh, the area in which we grew up in, we were like the only Asian household on the block. Um, so there was outside of when we had like you know a party or so, like on a weekend. Um, growing up, I just really didn't have anyone to talk to. So uh, I was a gamer growing up, you know, played a lot of video games, mm-hmm. um, hung out at home with my brothers. Um, but what year did you guys graduate high school? Me? Uh-huh. Eight, oh, eight. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I, Sorry, guys. Mm. Yeah, I thought you were. You thought I was older? Well, I thought that didn't. Oh, eight just sounds weird. <laughs> I don't know. I, oh, eight. I was 14 years after I graduated from high school. So that's about right. 11 for me. Yeah. Okay, so ten. I, I figured you were about ten years. Yeah, ninety seven. Um, but uh, yeah, because I was born born ninety. Good uh-huh. old ninety. Sorry guys, <laughs> I had to throw that one in there. Seventies. Uh, Seventies. You know year. what's funny? They they, uh, they show those little memes or whatever of kids like asking their parents, "Were you born in the nineteen hundreds?" <laughs> and when they say that, just "Were you born in the nineteen hundreds?" I felt that. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> oh yeah, I felt it in my in my lumbar and my all of it. In my, in my sky, sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. These I'm kids, actually, they don't understand or appreciate the some of the stuff like that we grew up through, like not not having to wear a seatbelt. Mm. Um, you know, um, cars that don't beep way. at you when you don't wear a seatbelt. Gosh, I miss those days. The 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 station wagon oh, yeah. the wrong yes. direction, right? Where you're in the back seat and you're facing uh, out and the people park like pull up behind you, you're like looking dead in their eye. Yeah, there's no like, iPads <laughs> in the car. There's no there's no, no screens in the car. No. There, yeah. there was there was no uh, there was no luxury involved. I always tell this story famously. My in-laws took a trip every summer to Lake City, Colorado, and they had a pickup truck, and they had three kids. My wife was the middle child. Her oldest brother, her brother who's the oldest, and her would lay in the back of the pickup for nine hours driving to Lake City, Colorado. No, no, like covering. Okay, just just <laughs> lay in the back of the pickup truck for nine hours. And when it rained, they just put a tarp over them. Over them. <laughs> and that was that was yeah. that would be criminal these days. Like it, it, that would be a headline. Yes. You know, Amarillo couple takes their kids, kids. to Lake City, Colorado, in the back. Yeah. It was just it would be crazy. But that's the way we lived our lives. It was. I remember riding on the top of cars sometimes, yeah. and my friends, you know, I'd be like, "Hey, we're gonna just go down the street. Let me just jump mm-hmm. on the top of your car." Yeah. And we would just take off down the street. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the good old days. Now it's just we've. And we, now everyone, you have to wear a helmet when you ride yeah, a bicycle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. It's so bad. It's so I bad. remember um, my buddy and I were. Um, I grew up with. He was about five years older than me, and we had one bike between the two of us. And he was older, so he would ride it, and then I'd ride on the handlebars. You know, mm-hmm. as we went to stop and go, or we went to go get something from a convenience store. Once I were driving, and I'm on the handlebar, and he's like weaving in and out, and uh, my foot goes in between the the like he gets stuck in the mm-hmm. spoke. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you know what happens next? Oh, yeah. so we Boom. go roll over, and immediately I and all the bike he lands on me. I'm scraped up, you know, I'm crying like crazy. And um, I remember I get home and I'm telling my mom and she was just make, put some out, put some hydroperoxide, put yeah. something, clean it up. Yeah, clean yeah. It up. you'll be then, fine. Don't get blood on the couch. Like, that happens now <laughs> to my head. I mean, we're responding with first aid. Are uh, we going to urgent care? Are we? I mean, dude, it's, like so, it's so funny. Like with the two-year-old, he's always doing stuff like that, right? And so it's like me and my wife, we're, we have two very different ways of seeing my son do things he's not supposed to. Because my wife's like, don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to, you know, you're going to cut, get a cut or you're going to bruise your leg. And I'm like, son, if you do that, you're going to fall on your face and then I'm going to laugh at you and then I'm going to pick you up, but then you're going to learn your lesson. And it's like, she hates when I do that. She's I like, think there's bumps and bruises that we all have to have. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, it's one thing to be you know, dangling from the side of a balcony, <laughs> you know, uh, mm-hmm. that's one of the, those, that's one thing, but there's, there's something to be said of, you know, Sometimes our kids would climb up the stairs, like we had stairs, and they would climb up the banister. Not, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. not too far, but uh-huh. far enough. I was like, if they fall, you know, they're they're gonna they're gonna figure it out. Yes, and mm-hmm. and they have to learn how to fall. That's a, there's an art to falling too. Yes, mm-hmm. like that's that's an duck important. and roll, guys. Yeah, there's. Uh, okay, I want to end on XO. So, uh, <laughs> 
Keystone Church, mm-hmm. your church. Shout out to Brandon and Susan. Great pastors there. I think the one best. of the cool things for, for me right now in this season is, and my dad's still an integral, big part of it, uh, part of what we're doing here at XO. Uh, his content is the best that we have. But this is an event that I'm excited about because uh, my dad's not a part of it, but it's still a great event. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, Brandon and Susan will be speaking, Dave and Ashley, yeah. and Roop, and Sean and Lynette. It's going to be a great date night experience uh, here in the South Lake area, South Lake Keller area. Uh, Keystone has a brand new building. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It is. Yeah, it is. It's fantastic. Uh, you feel like you're in heaven. So am I in church <laughs> I or am agree. I in heaven? I would agree with that. Am I in? It's just, it, it, it is, it, you know, to, to kind of plug mm. Keystone. I mean, it, it's a beautiful church inside and out. Uh, the people just as much. Um, and Brandon and Susan have done just an amazing job with mm-hmm. the vision that they had for for the church itself, you know, um, starting from a home to a furniture building to where it is now. And so as we get ready for, you know, this Exo date night, which was, you know, I'm, I've been part of the church for the past 12 years. Um, I was excited, of course, to just, hey, can Exo be part of this when I joined the team? At some point, I wanted the two to enter, you know, to, to come sure. on, let's do this. But you don't want to be too forceful with it as well. You want this to be led. Um, uh, and so it happened. And so we're excited. We're excited to do it. We have a huge, um, like, a, like anticipation for it. Like, yeah. we're just so excited for it because it's something local, too, for mm-hmm. this community here in South Lake Keller, Grapevine, Colleyville, uh, North Fort Worth. I mean, th- there's so many cities that we can pull in from yeah. uh, that I think is going to be really neat to kind of do something uh, fun, like a date night mm-hmm. where you can get a good and encouraging word. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't have a church home, Check out Keystone the following Sunday. We'll point you back to Sunday. They'll love to have you back. Um, and so I, I think this will be fun. I think this yeah. will be a lot of fun to do it. it you know, fun. Yeah. It's, it's kind of our first time to do it, the yeah. date night model, mm-hmm. right? We've been talking about this yeah. where, where it's not featuring uh, Pastor Jimmy, mm-hmm. right? That we don't have him necessarily featured out. Um, but it's. Go- it, I, I don't think it... It means that it's any less. I think that it's just going to sure. be just as good, mm-hmm. uh, just a different flavor. Yeah, no, it's going to be fantastic. It's mm-hmm. going to be awesome. I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's I think it's going to kick really off something really fun too, because you know we've we've thrown around this date night moniker a lot on a variety of things. You know, we did that test a little while back with uh, the Texas Gun Experience and having some of our <clears throat> some of our friends out there. Um, but uh, I think just figuring out ways in which we can continue this, whether it's at a church, mm-hmm. whether it is other experiences out there. We got dance with me here locally. We got like Sorella Tabla across the street doing these experiences where couples can't just get out, have a night to celebrate their marriage, hang out with each other, and then uh, have a little XO flair on it. We, we have a specific way in which we do things that people love. Uh, and so I think it's been really cool to figure out what is, how can XO kind of help to make this experience a little bit better, just that mm-hmm. much better for you? Yeah, I think for, for as we, t- as you know, kind of just kind of following up on what Daniel said there is, you know, we want to experiment. We talked earlier about having a sandbox and Mm R&D and things and stuff. And so date night was one of those things that we really felt strongly about. We really want to help couples have fun, nice together, uh, give them a good encouraging word and send them on their way. And so that they feel energized and, you know, ready for what's next in in their marriage. And so, you know, date night is something we, you know, we really are believe in we would love feedback on it, you know, and I guess my plug to people watching, if you're watching this is yeah. let us know what you think about it. Come yeah. check it out. If Come it doesn't it work, out. it's not what you let want. Let us know what let you want to see in a date night too. Yeah. Like, you know, if you have any ideas out there that you've been wanting to do, uh, wanting us to help kind of try to create, uh, I'd love to kind of just hear thoughts on date nights in general. Yeah. The idea mm-hmm. is just to keep people together, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. uh, constantly connected, constantly working together, doing something fun together, having an experience that's kind of, create some newness and mm-hmm. some freshness to the relationships. Sometimes you just get in ruts and you need somebody like XO to come around and say, Hey, you can try something different, try something new. Yep. I'm, you know, I'm wanting to, uh, of course you guys know I'm <laughs> full of ideas, but, uh, yeah, the, the, the cooking side to connectivity, uh-huh. you know, whether it's cookbook or cooking show, uh, things like that. How do we, how do we infuse that into, uh, what we do? Uh, I'm thinking about doing some wine tastings, and we're launching yeah. a wine label. XO uh, wine. I, gonna... The one I get a lot, the one I hear a lot is m- kind of like that XO singles, XO dating, right? Yes. How do you, how can you help us find 
or how, how to date, first of all, but then also help us build a community of strong singles. I don't know what that looks like. That is tough. No, I, yes, I that's know a tough it's one. tough. I know, Excel not, Christian Mingle type uh, yeah, of thing. Because well, I mean, you could go on that. You could do Match.com and stuff, but I, I'm not sure if that's into, ours. Uh, it turns into the Tinder swindler. I mean, it turns into <laughs> the... Uh, that's a good one. That's like actually a good that's one. That's a good one on Netflix. <laughs> it, uh, Shout out to Netflix. It turns it turns into you know, like the Christian Mingle.com. Yeah. A lot of guys are looking just to hook up. Yep. Yeah, and I don't know necessarily think that that would be the 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 avenue that we would go down, but you know there are different things that we can do to try to promote a good night to come hang out or something, yep. you know. Um, but I, I do know that that's one area that we are prayerful about, you know, that we get a lot of people that are saying, hey, you know, I'm not married yet, but we love your content. We love, mm-hmm. we, we want to do this right. I want to enter some marriage correct. So how do we do it? Um, we have things, we have things, of course, for pre-marriage and engagements and stuff, but sing, single life dating, much different. And so, you know, I'm sure we'll take a stab at that in the future, what that yeah, looks like. For sure. Um, you know, maybe we follow around Marcus on, with a, 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 a reality. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Marcus, our yeah. producer, doing a little, uh, maybe maybe doing a little date show, um, kind of Kimmy, following his single life. Kimmy, Kimmy, and yeah, Kimmy, Kimmy's yeah. So. We can follow both. Yes. Uh, I, I just think there's a lot of opportunity there to try to help people. Yeah. Not sure yet what it looks like. No, that's a big deal i mean the the opportunity to catch people before they get married and teach them how Mm -hmm. to find the right person date the right way court the right way and then get married the right way and and their chance of success just skyrockets oh it does whenever they have uh uh, that opportunity to start the right way it does Um, Well, how painful was it? You guys would just be answering emails right now or doing something around the office that's very true hey hey, before we leave i did i did pull the uh team like Two this. questions for you guys. You pu- pulled them? You pulled yeah. them? Yeah. I asked okay. the team, hey, what if you were to ask BE or EG any question, Uh-oh. what would it be? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to go first? Uh-oh. EG. I'll go first. All right. So a uh, question I got for you. Okay. You are always, this guy, this guy is always full of joy and energy uh, and it's just always coming this in. Is true. Coming in strong every morning. Like, what's up, everybody? Everybody wants to know, what's your secret, man? And you cannot pull mm-hmm. a little Hulk. I'm always happy. No, no, <laughs> no. The secret is uh, I, I had a, I think was, I had a gift given to me. I just showed you yesterday. My dad, it says the, my dad just recently passed away mm. and it says the undisputed champion of joy. Mm. Uh, and so my dad was that. My, my pops was that. He was exactly cool. that. And so, uh, and I think I, had, I was telling my friend just the other night when he gave it to me was, I think what he had really mastered was no matter his circumstances, he always remembers his blessings. Mm. He always remembers his blessings. And you, you talked a lot about your walk and like how you got here, the, you know, from, you know, uh, first generation, mm-hmm. you know, here in the States is I feel blessed to be a, a citizen, right? I, I yeah. fought to be a citizen. I was raised in, you know, I was born in Mexico, adopted here to the States, naturalized when I was 19. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that journey alone makes you very appreciative of just what you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then fast forward to, you know, you add in the fact, like you said, it, you know, when you were at Baylor, you weren't making wise decisions. Mm-hmm. You're a little bit wills off. I was wills off, um, you know. And so, those things like that, you know, when you when you know that hey, there's been a lot of favor, you know, when you did, weren't even asking for it, yep. or you didn't even know you were getting it. Um, that's why. So I think that's the yeah, the, that's the, the joy part of it. Um, there's not much that's going to get me down. Yeah. Um, because. I, I, it's kind of like what your dad talks about, like just like you know, it's supposed to be uh, his end time stuff is supposed to be encouraging. Yeah, you know, it's not supposed yeah. to be Debbie Downer. Yeah, for sure. Bah, bah, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's always it's joy. Yeah, and so that's why I come in joyful. That's um, awesome. It isn't. It isn't. But sometimes I have to fake it. Sometimes I have to come in like it's not always. You have to fake yeah. it until you make it. <laughs> until you make it. There you go. And then you have the joy. Your joy tank is full. Yeah. All so. right. Question for BE. Okay. What's your favorite memory with your mom and dad? No. Oh. This pod show was brought to you by. Uh, <laughs> thanks for seeing you next time. My favorite memory is my mom and dad. Hallmark I moment. Yeah. I can't. I can't give you that. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I've been around for 44 years. Let me think about this. Um, yeah. Favorite memory is my mom and dad. Favorite vacation. Favorite vacation with my mom and dad. Uh, that's not as easy as Eric's. Yeah, I got an I easy one. Sorry. I'll give you one. I'll, I'll oh, just... We'll, make, no, all right, we'll, all right. we'll, we'll give him another one. Go ahead. Well, I mean... Go ahead. I, you got one? No, go ahead. No, I mean, it, I don't want to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You know what? All right, let's throw out another that. question. We'll just throw... We'll, we will point out the fact that Brent Evans loves some Florida Georgia line. 
Really? Listen, There's been a rumor. I'm a, I, what? I am a... Well, first of all, how dare you? <laughs> Second of all... Told in total confidence in I, Mandy Moore. I do enjoy the Florida Georgia Line, and I don't care who knows. I don't care. Uh, okay. But I actually question anybody who doesn't like them because they're pretty awesome. Okay. But also, I'm into country right now. I don't know what it is. I I've, okay. I'm into... When I put on music right now, I feel like I want to be on the lake with my friends hanging out mm. well that's that's, that's a legal that's my a friend Ardo Parma. <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i mean you know we just uh, uh, shout out to the gavix who have a place up in minnesota i spent 3 summers in a row up there at cross lake minnesota with their family on the lake and they were always playing you know uh, luke bryan and all those kind of mm. artists on on the boat and it was just awesome it just it was just a fun summer all three summers were awesome. Just being out there, you just feel like uh, there's not a care in the world. And I think that's why some of those, like mm-hmm. Jason Aldean and uh, Luke Bryan and Zach uh, Brown does it for me. Like when I hear Zach, Zach Brown, Brown, that's a that is a chicken fry. Yes, that is a, a lake uh, lake awesome. song right there. It's a sing along. Yes, that's a good sing along. Yeah. That's so a, like four of these piano bar type I used song. to make fun of I used to make fun of Luke Bryan because um, of his tight jeans. Well, I just his <laughs> voice. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> we're out. We're we're outroing to Florida Georgia Line. So if you, you know go back, you if you go back to the no, I've, <laughs> trust me, uh, I, if you go back to the discography, because I'm actually really just experiencing their full discography this this year. I used to do though just like their baby or a song that makes uh, That's kind of their big one, yes, you know, that you'll yep. listen to on the radio. But if you go back and listen to some of their older stuff, they've got some great stuff. Really? It's fun. Hmm. It, some people might say. <laughs> whatever. Brett Devins might say. I, you know, you have, you have to have a complete diet of music. You can't just stick I in did. one. I did. I agree. understand that. I, so I appreciate everything. Now, I some, agree. I listen, I listen to everything. Really, I do. Mm-hmm. I enjoy everything from... John Mayer. <laughs> just helping you out. Again. John Mayer <laughs> is a lyrical genius. Uh, he is. He, he can, I mean, I'm not going to deny it. Guitar. Don't go yeah. to don't go to his first stuff. And that's all like bubblegum, like college stuff. But his later stuff, he's amazing. He's got some. There is a line. No, I'm dead serious right now. <laughs> I'm listening. Bring it. If you if you listen to the song "Stop This Train" by John Mayer. It's an amazing song that'll like, stop like, the strain. I'm gonna go after we leave here. I'm going to go to my office. Yeah, we're gonna sit. To we're gonna all sit together and listen. We're to not it. gonna it, all sit together. It's, and it's, listen. It's, it's, a song, <laughs> it's a song about getting, watching his parents getting older, watching him getting older, and uh, he's like, he has, has a line, "I'm so scared of getting older. I'm only good at being young." Mm-hmm. And he talks about just this watching his dad, you know, getting older and everything. Like okay, that. so it's like one of those like Conway mm. Twitty songs, like the "That's My Job" kind of like. That gets you in the feels of it, kind of. Yeah, gets but it's, you. it's it's kind of got a it's got a vibe to it. He has a, a song on one of his new, new new albums. I like all this stuff. He's got some great stuff. But it's called In the Blood, and it's kind of talking blood. about how um, how he is, and is it always in the blood? Like how his mom was, how his dad was. Is that just always the way it's going to be? Is it is it always in the blood? Like getting passed down, that kind of thing. <laughs> you play it. Play that song. Turn it up. Play that funky music. Oh man. So so okay so. What else do you listen to? What, what's the third artist? So all right, so I know that you listen to FGL. I know that you listen to Mayer. What's the third one then? Because that's variety. There's two different there. So yeah, what's the third very one? different. What's the third one? What would be the third one then? I don't know. My, my kids influence a lot of what I'm mm. going to say. Um, I mean, we're I gaining viewers right now. We're gaining yeah, viewers just, right now. Okay, it's Cody Johnson, but that's country. You, can, you can't go wrong with Cody Johnson. Um, uh I'm trying to get the people what they want, which so the, is... So the top songs... So I don't even know so many songs on my top songs of 2021 because my kids played them. Mm. Like Big and Chunky by Will I Am. Ah, that's, 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 that's your song. song. That's, that's your song. That's, that's your Madigan. song. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> big and Chunky. I like big them big. Chunky. I like them chunky. <laughs> uh, there's some Weekend on here. All right. Uh, Weekend's got some Post great Malone, stuff, man. Uh, you got some Surfaces? Uh, surfaces, surfaces right? Here. Yeah, yep, yep. Uh, uh, just I got you. I'm not trying to. We've been listening, Mike. So the a lot of the Marvel mm-hmm. Universe soundtracks they have some great oh yeah stuff on there. So we'll the Guardians mm-hmm. totally. Guardians great is stuff. a solid soundtrack. That, yeah, I have that on vinyl, and that's that's a really fun one. Yeah. So I have to be careful what I listen to around my kids. We've been we've been digging some uh, 
some CC Winans uh, believe oh, that was so oh, good. Dude. That's our Sunday morning drive to church song. Bro, uh, I will never uh, unlive that moment of seeing CC perform live at XO this past February. Yeah, if, that was that was fantastic. It, it was one of those. It was a it's a moment. Like mm-hmm. for me, it was one of those. I remember being in there while she was doing sound check, and she was you know right you know everyone was out, and I think there was maybe about 15, 20 of us in there. She's singing, and it's. She's she's not even like trying. I mean, it's just yeah. so effortlessly, just comes out. It's and ridiculous. So how it, it, she's is. so talented, yeah. and you know, and I'm I'm standing there, and uh, her husband Alvin. Shout out to Alvin for getting them Alvin over Love. there. Alvin Love was uh-huh. a man. Yeah. Um, uh, he's standing there, and I remember standing next to Keisha, and we were kind of like looking at each other, like this is too good to be true. Mm. Like, you know, how do we how do we end up here? You know, we're just two kids from you know Arlington and GP, and you know it's um, it, it was it was a cool moment. So yeah. good CC song, good yeah. CC song. It is. Um, okay, well, so for those of you listening, for those of you watching, uh, thanks for being a part of the pod show. Uh, this is a a different slice of the EXO pie. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, for those that are that are listening. Please make an effort to come to the Keystone Church event, Exo Date Night, coming up in April. We'll be in Pittsburgh, Colorado Springs, Atlanta, mm-hmm. Austin, Amarillo, Amarillo. by morning mm-hmm. this fall. So we have That's a lot of fun. places for you to come here. Amazing content. Please listen uh, and, and, and like and subscribe this video. Please tell your friends about it. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.